Greetings and welcome to episode 28. You are now listening to the podcast of Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Well, today I'm still energetic and I want to continue to moving forward in topics of business that I think are very relevant. I want to share the 10 factors to success and how to measure that factor. Sometimes people can tell you that they're the reason for your success, the epiphany that you had when you were surrounding them. But here's how you can tell if a person was really genuinely the reason behind your success is when you meet them prior to elevating yourself. If you meet someone and you're already on the path to success, they're either going to, you're, you're going to observe them. They're going to be observational to what it is you're trying to reach for. Their experience is going to help you to see whether that is something that is valued or not valued in the curriculum in which you're walking in the storyline behind what it is you're passionate about. So your passion is already within you. It's instilled in you from a child. And I can go back as far as being three and four years old, seeing my grandmother run a business out of our home, a home-based business, okay? My mom, you know, had so many different skill sets until I had to have learned a lot of that definitely from her. My uncle, first African-American foreman at a inter- intertech um, technology center. And so these things really already paved the way for me. Anyone else beyond that were either the observe observational practices that I witnessed or people who gave me options. I would never say that, you know, one person is the reason for my success. I can never say that. What I can say is that I believed in myself enough to give myself an opportunity. So I want to look at these factors to success and how I arrive at them because many different people look at things and different ideas and and success stories. And then they find out little secrets to what was successful and what wasn't. You know, one thing in life is during a time where growth is happening, being mindful of the things that are being said are very vital. But yet when you have an individual or a group of individuals who believe one thing, it can come off sounding as though they're very bullying, very facetious, very just negative. So when we talk about success, one of the things we want to leave out is negativity. We definitely want to do that. We want to be able to balance our lives, to be able to meditate, to ground ourselves, to think clearly so that we can move to the next phase, that we can move to the next duration of what it is that's going to help us to empower ourselves over the course of time. So both personally and professionally, it is very vital and important to figure out what success is defined as to you. Now, it may look very similar to someone else, but the path and the ways of getting there will be totally unique and different. It'll be passionate driven. It will be, um, What makes the most successful reason for you to do what it is that you do? It is a personal thing. Success is a personal relationship with you. Okay. You can look around and you could say, I like that color blue. I like that color orange. I like that color green. I like that color purple. You can move yourself to whatever dimension you choose to. It's not about being wealthy. It's not about being, you know, the forerunner of any new technology or any, you know, Steve Jobs or, you know, the Facebook creator. It's nothing like that. Success is potentially about becoming the best version of who you are. 
and then using that ability to maximize and introduce it to other individuals by example, not by taking them and breaking them down because that's what you would happen to you. Because a lot of people, especially in the realm of moving towards their passion, they're going to realize and they're going to keep in the back of their mind and they're going to plant a seed in the back of their minds. The reason behind why I would never be a leader of that capacity, because A, B, C, and D, the things that they do, the way that they react, the way that they observe life, how critical they are, how argumentative they are. These are things that will never, ever be as a leader in some people's perspective of success. So then you have strategies of how you're going to achieve your success. And this strategy can be different for everyone. Again, there's no cookie cutter way to say that I'm going to be a successful leader in this capacity or that capacity until you have some trials, some tribulations, some setbacks, some hardcore like realizations that you shouldn't have done that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, I should have done this, you know. But then as you go through the process again, you'll have the opportunity to get it right again. If you don't go too far out the sector, out the um, portal of success, if you get too far over there in the space of I'm going to do what I want to do, then it makes it hard for you to come back and be able to tap into the portal of the success in which you're creating for yourself through your own manifestation. So the factors that contribute to this happiness is your ability to be successful for you, your ability to recognize that you have the potential to do it your way because you've sat back and looked at the trials and errors of others. It makes sense to make it make sense to you. And your leadership style is nothing like others. However, there is a genre of leadership styles. But generally, there are some common things that we can include in our day-to-day walk, leading us to the success journey in which we decide to go. So how do you create a key that will let you know you're successful? Success in and of itself can be defined by the individual person. It can't be defined by the group of people watching you because it's going to be very, very critical. When you sit back and you ask someone to help you with a project or something just because they help you, they guide you, they steer you based on what they know, their experience prior to. But because you choose to put the spin on it that it's yours through your emotional opportunities or your you know, um, clarity of supervision of things that you've seen through extreme confidence within yourself, that determines how you're going to put the label to it. So these strategies are all about forcing yourself to see what the reality of the passion is. How passionate are you? How willing are you to sit down to the drawing board and draw that and etch that beautiful vision, vision board out that it is that you want for your life, for your plan, not for the things you want to get when you make the money, because what will happen is you'll lack passion. You will lack the opportunity to be soulfully successful because money is the motivator, not your creative idea, your unique idea, your passionate thought, those things are not even put in the equation. And that's how people feel that success is based upon wealth and the amount of money you have in the bank, the car you drive, but it's not always that way, okay? In this plan of success, 
one must have one has to be completely detailed in what they're going to include in it. When I started Scales to Success LLC, the very thing that I said was my mission statement was to meet people exactly where they are. I remember it like it was yesterday and it was like over 20 or uh, 15 years ago. And basically what I said was I wanted to take you like as though I am the stewardess on an airplane and I'm allowing you to sit in first class with the pilot or right in the cabin with the pilot. And I'm telling you that as the pilot, I'm going to steer where you want to go. And as I steer you where you want to go, you're observing what you see. You're creating the the platform for how you're going to manifest this beautiful ob observation that you're practicing. I'm just there as the supporter. And, you know, a lot of people get this mentor definition completely. They get it mixed up. See, the mentor is there to just give the plant seeds but the person who's growing already is the one who's going to figure out how to water that seed, if it should be watered or if it's just weeds and they should pull it out. It's up to that mentee, supposedly. And, and one thing that I would never suggest that a mentor should ever do is to throw back in the face of a successful person that it was them that got them there. And that's why I tell everyone who joins the Skills to Success LLC program, you are your own unique, individual, independent person. You are creating the, the platform to your success. Where you want to see this thing go, that's where you're taking it. I'm just merely giving you the pathway to say you go that way. You go this way. You know, a veteran told me once, I can take you to the path, but I cannot, I, I, I cannot hold you while you walk through it. You have to walk through it yourself. Because even if I did walk you through it, would you be grateful at the end? Or would you say thank you and keep it moving? You got more strength than I do now. While I'm sitting there, you're getting further ahead. So these are, these are real prominent ideas and how we handle success. And although success may look different to everyone, it is important that we enjoy and explore our own idea of success and try not to be influenced or controlled or manipulated or bullied into being this one successful person because someone was a doctor in your family or someone was a lawyer in your family or someone was an engineer in your family. So now you got to feel you got to follow in those footsteps. My mother was a first lady. My mother was a nurse. My mother was a cook. My mother was a, a worker. I mean, you know, she worked different skilled jobs, but it was all towards nursing. That was her field of expertise. I have never wanted to be a nurse. I've never wanted to really cook, <laughs> but yet there are some things that we have to do. There are roles that we have to play in order to maintain that level of success that we truly need. The next thing we do when we are looking at the factors that determine success is we prioritize our goals. When it comes down to debating and arguing, if you're in debating class, if you're uh, in political science and you have a debate that you have to do, yes, of course, you put that energy into it. But it should never be that type of energy all the time, continually. And people will try to distract you based upon the way that you handle your business. But if you stay straight, you stay focused, you stay in the, in the light of this is what I'm doing and nothing is going to stop it, you'll get there faster than being distracted. Because other people's priorities of your goals won't always fit with what it is you're trying to do. So while others are looking at the short term, they're seeing what they can do to either push the success your way um, or observe you doing it and saying thank you and 
continuing to go because they know you're going to be a success. No one owes anyone anything unless it's under an agreed upon contract. I will give you this after I get here. Give me a certain length of time and this is what I will do. No one owes anyone anything if they have not committed to following the plan all the way through. So prioritizing your goals and making sure that individuals do not accept your success from all the hard work you did and call themselves a mentor or call themselves someone who successfully you to do what you know. Nobody. The only person that drives an individual to do anything passionate and successful in a positive way is the person doing the work. That's it. The next thing is to acquire these educational skills. We have to go. We have to get educated. If you meet somebody in the field of education when you were already there, they're just someone who is coming along the journey with you to make that decision. Are you going to stick or stay? Are, are, are you going to stay? Are you going to give it up? You know? It's not about the competition, but it is about observation and being able to clear, clearly see that you stuck it out and you did what you needed to do successfully. Uh, um, understanding, helping people achieve certain things through the way that you handle your professionalism, the way you handle your success. No one should be able to tell you you're unprofessional in an arena where you are being your greatest version of yourself. They're just pissed that they cannot do it your way and they can't find a crack, a weakness in the crack of the success that you have motivated and molded yourself into maintaining in order to make sure you don't mess up again, in order to make sure you dot all your I's and cross all your T's. No one should get into the intricate workings of how you run your business and all the things that you do. Let them see it after it's done. That way, they're so amazed at the beauty of what you've already created. You've, that's old school for you. You've moved on to something else and they don't have a way to get in. They don't have a measure to uh, equate to them saying, that's my friend from the past. And be careful of those people you bring back from the past. Either they're going to teach you something or you're going to teach them something because they're in your past for a reason. They were there for you at that particular moment. You do not have to carry other people into your future unless you choose to do so. And it better be sustainable for you. It better make sense. It shouldn't be anything that would make you worse off than where you are. And anybody who brings drama and chaos and trauma from their own experiences to make you feel bad about what it is you do, that means that they came to destroy. They came to divide. They came to distract. And that is not part of the success process. Not at all. If someone does not come to enhance your life and to empower you to move forward, and it's a good balanced journey. You know, I had a friend from LA come in, you know, they flew in and they always love to get this nice exotic hotel and everything is beautiful in this particular hotel. And when she came to see the things that was happening at the areas in which I'm moving towards right now, I, I wanted this perfect opportunity to show her all the perfect things that I'm doing, you know, right now. I wanted it to be perfect because that was my level of success. But of course, when she came in, we were under construction, <laughs> refrigerator wasn't working, um, you know, people were were like acting out, I think, you know, it was a lot. Yeah, people were acting out and it was just a disaster for me. But the genuine nature of my friend who showed up, it made me feel keep going. There was no type of, oh girl, you done messed up now. This is the last thing I would have done. Oh, this is on your plate. Oh, you got so much going on. No, she was like, I'm so proud of you. This is a work in progress. You got a lot more to go. You know, you got a lot of work to do. However, 
It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. And that motivated me. Before she got home, I was on to another project looking at how we can make the house better because she just planted that seed. Just keep going. Just keep going. You're good. Sometimes we need that. And then it all depends on the relationship of the connection from the very beginning. Was it competitive in nature? You know, was the relationship something where people felt jealous and envious? Or was this individual envious? Was this person jealous at the beginning? That determines how the relationship continues to build itself over time. And that's the reason why there's so much love and genuine genuineness in the relationship that is better off just planting the seed and saying, you go but not to claim ownership to your success. Anyone who does that is a bully, is a professional bully. Number four, cultivating good habits. Practice every day. If you do a little bit every day, I guarantee you the majority of all of your success will come to full fruition. Mm -hmm. Every day, a little bit at a time, is going to build your habit and build your Stamina to keep moving forward. And it's not about competition. It's about passion. And when a person is passionate, there is nothing that you can tell an artist when they have done their debut and they have get, gotten known to the world and to their community based upon the genre of music in which they are artistically designed to do. That makes them who they are that makes them very popular to the world. So be clear and focused and stay in good practicing and good habits and the direction of your life is going to throw away all those old habits that no longer matter. I remember having been a smoker and when I realized that there were other habits and there were new things that I could do, I threw away that old habit and I created another habit. Um, Some people call it You know, uh, some people who are not used to individuals around them doing a lot of things, um, they notice it, they call it, oh, you're a workaholic, oh, you're too focused on this, you're too focused on that. Why not be? Why not go ahead and do the things that you know you need to do that's going to make it a positive experience for you with that positive attitude? That attitude is everything. You know, constructive attitudes, some people take constructive criticism the wrong way. They like to criticize and then call it constructive because what they want to do is break you down because they don't want you to go where you're going next. Oh, my God. What did I miss? What did I miss? No, everyone did their success the way they chose to do their success. And that's why I say competition is nothing It means nothing because when you compete, all you're doing is so busy looking at somebody else and rushing to get to where they are, rushing to get in front of them to just look back and fall and trip because somebody's in front of you too. So that makes no sense at all. So never compete, not even with yourself. I used to feel that I had to compete with myself, but what I did was I decided to take on a positive attitude and just do me. Just be the best me I could be, you know, and then learn from my mistakes. That's the that's the other thing. You know, when you're passionate, yeah, you're going to make mistakes because you're so busy running. You're so busy running. But when you go past that and you get to that point where it matters the most to you. Oh, my God, it is so awesome. So. That's what I want to do. Talk about too. be open to new ideas. Yes. Get that independent contractor's license. Go ahead and get that degree. Go ahead and get whatever it is you need to get based on what you plan out for your life. Because somebody somewhere always got somebody's attention who was very competitive. They got the attention of someone and they distracted them. So that's why they're not where they should be at the age in which they are because they're so busy trying to compete with Tom 
a Mark and and Daryl. You know what I mean? I mean, so that's what I'm saying. What's the sense? But take risks, but be very, very careful because those risks can really be something that could cost a lot. And then just keep working. Work it how you work it. The pandemic said we didn't have to work, right? But people forgot the world reopened. Everybody else is working. And then you got get ready to be prepared. Set yourself up to always be prepared. No one can ever take your power away from you and don't allow them to. Entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs, people that are graduating, don't let that certificate sit on that mantelpiece and collect dust. Get up, find something unique about your life and do something different. So others 20 years from late, 20 years from that point can sit back and say, wow, you're still graduating from things. So this is how we measure our success. We do it based upon how we see it. What is the most valuable thing to us that makes us say in the middle of the night, I'd rather get up and study than to just lay here and do nothing. God bless you. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. As always, keep it 100 and we will see you next time. Peace.